Hello everybody and welcome to another match preview. This time I'm talking about the Wolves against league leaders Brighton and Hove Albion at Molyneux at half past five tomorrow. Uh, live on Sky and a couple of bits of team news first. It looks like uh, Helder Costa might be fit to start tomorrow although personally I don't know whether I would risk him starting tomorrow because we don't want him to get a further injury and then be out for pre-season and then affect the start of next season. Although, saying that, with him being linked to other clubs, maybe it'd be good if he was not available to go. Uh, Carla Kimi is some way off being fit still. He's still got a hamstring strain, so he won't be in goal tomorrow. It'll be Andy Lonergan, who I think has done reasonably well in the three games that he's played since he's come back from his injury. Brighton, of course, top of the table, two points clear of Newcastle as it stands, and they will be looking to extend that lead because they play before Newcastle tomorrow. And with Newcastle going to Leeds as well, which will be a tricky game, they can't guarantee the three points there. Saying that, Brighton and Hove Albion haven't won at Molyneux since 1991, so it could be in with a chance, but we've only beaten them twice in that time. Wolves have currently got the third worst home record in the league, and Brighton have the second best away record. They've won their last three games since being beaten by Leeds as well, so they're on a good run, and with promotion to the Premier League in sight, Brighton will be hoping that they can get another three points to help them on the way to that Goal. Now Brighton's strengths to me lie in attack, they've got lots of goals in their team. Just looking through some of their stats, Glenn Murray scored 21, Knockhart has got 13 with 8 assists, Hemed and Baldock both on 11s. We have only got two players who have reached double figures. I think that's where our weaknesses lie. We haven't got a goal scorer in attack, we haven't got more than one midfielder who can score. We've got Dave Edwards but that sort of is where it stops. So that's maybe somewhere where we need to strengthen in the summer and Lambert has come out this week as well saying that he will strengthen and they've already got targets in mind which is great to hear because usually we have to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and nothing really happens. But it sounds like they've got plans, they've got targets and they're going to go out and get them. Brighton as well set up 4-4-2, a little bit like Leicester. I think, 4-4-2, catch them on the counter, quick players up front, strong players at the back. Could be in for a tough match, but I think if Costa Cavaliero and Weiman, Marshall can inter interchange and work together really well, I think we've got a good chance of nicking something. But Brighton will be on form tomorrow. I imagine that from the first whistle, they're going to be on the ball, they're going to be pressing when we've got the ball, and they're going to be putting us under lots of pressure. We've got nothing to play for now, we're pretty much safe. No one be surprised that if... Uh, Lambert started with Morgan Gibbs-White again or maybe some of the other players giving Donovan Wilson a go I know that Conor Ronan is injured at the moment so he won't be taking any part but it'd be good to see some of these younger players who we've heard a lot about getting into the team the main thing Wolves need to stop is individual errors we saw last week Matt Doherty gave away a penalty and then missed a great opportunity to make it 2-1 at the start of the second half which he missed and then they went on and Conce uh, conceded a third, which was Lee Evans's fault as well for giving the ball away on the edge of the box. If we can just cut out those small individual errors, a little bit more concentration, a bit more thinking, instead of sort of turning up thinking that we'd won five games in a row, Bristol are down the bottom, we just need to turn up and we'll win. That sort of attitude gets you stung in the championship and I hope that the boys turn up tomorrow, play hard, fight hard and put on a good display for the Wolves home support. It's due to be a good crowd I believe. They've had this ticket offer on now for the Forest game and for this game with uh, if you buy an adult ticket you can have three mates for £5 so hopefully there'll be a big crowd in and it's another good ticket scheme to try and get some more season tickets sold before that end of May deadline. The one other little bit of news from this week from the Molyneux is that the expansion of the stadium is currently on hold until the attendances go up by 5,000. I don't know what to think about the stadium because personally I'm against the expansion of the stadium. I don't think we should have done the, st the Stan Cullis and I don't think we should do any, there's no need to do any more. I can see that perspective but then also if you look at teams like Swansea, Cardiff, Hull, Southampton, teams that had derelict stadiums, run-down stadiums, and then redeveloped them, they were able to attract much higher quality of players than they were in their old stadiums. We haven't really got that problem, so I can understand why it's maybe on their radar. One final bit of news is not from the Wolves, but it's from our neighbours, Birmingham City. Apparently, with their new investors, they are going to be getting their Chinese assistant manager uh, starting in August for next season. His name is Lee Guan. So, uh, 
great news for the blues there. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then why don't you like it? If you love the wolves, if you like match day vlogs, then why don't you subscribe? Because I started doing them now. I did one for the Bristol game. I'll be doing one for the Brighton game tomorrow. And I'll also be doing another one on Monday for Leeds away. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.